right, good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. It's 6.30 a.m., May 28th. Price of Bitcoin currently at 92.29. So let's get to the analysis and see what all is going on. All right, so I'm going to start off with the 15-minute chart here, okay? So yesterday I showed my community that uh, we can make an easy five-wave count up from this bottom that we put in around uh, 8618. All right, so this is wave one, two, three, four, and a quick five up there, okay? Uh, wave five, all it really has to do is extend just beyond, you know, wave three, and we've completed that five wave structure, all right? Now, question is, are we in a ABC kind of retracement or have we not finished the five wave structure? Well, to me, it looks fairly clear that yeah, this looks like an easy wave, five waves going on the way up. And if we look at the 30 minute time frame, yesterday in the live session, I actually talked about this area right here being the supply order block where you can see rejection number one, uh, strong rejection number two, and then we're coming for that third rejection right there. All right, so a couple of different ways to look at this area, why this could be the top of the fifth, like I said, right up here. Now, if we're looking at the ABC style rejection, we're technically coming into that B wave right here, okay? So what I like to do sometimes is, I like to look at it like this, okay? What you could do is you could turn on, all right, a fixed range. Actually, let's just go to my favorites, fixed range. And you just get, get a fixed range from this high to where we are right now. Okay, so for the most part, <clears throat> the highest volume has been transacted right around this area right here, 91.75. So the fact that we're above this area means that we are technically bullish and we can push up a little bit more. Now, if you want to get a ABC style correction, you typically want a regular ABC, okay? So what we could do is we could simply draw another fib inside the top of the fifth, which is the, and then the bottom of the A right there, right? So top of the fifth, A wave completed, B wave is coming up right now, okay? So where is B wave right now? A B wave is hitting that 618, 65% area, which is called the golden pocket, all right? So this is probably the best area that price should reverse from. It doesn't mean it has to, but ideally you would want price to reverse here if this is going to be the beginning of the B wave, okay? So a B, or I'm sorry, beginning of the C wave. So this should be completing the B right here, and then we should be going down for the C, all right? So where could C head down towards. Well, if we just simply grab a fib um, retracement from this bottom to this high, we can get a retracement back towards this 618 to 65% area, which is around, let's draw like that, uh, 8880 to 8858. All right, so down to those levels, I mean, that'd be a good area for a BTC to drop off into for the C wave. It's also very possible that the C wave stretches deeper or we just start a new count in general, and then the C wave completely smashes all the, the retracement levels on the way down, and we put in a new lower low as per this key swing. All right, on the four hour time frame, I've drawn a descending parallel channel. We've battled this trend line right here, right here, that you can see touch one, touch two, and touch three as resistance unable to actually get past it and we're, we're really struggling to actually break through which makes sense again because remember this was the 30 minute order block that we were seeing let me turn this one off over here wait for that one so we're not only battling this key resistance area right here but we're also battling this ascending trend line right so it makes sense that we're struggling right here to actually break through now we're coming up at the end of the month I've talked about when it comes to deer a bit, put options, there's a lot of size for the 8,000 marker, the 8325 marker, and then even the 7,000 levels. It's possible, it's possible that by the end of the month or maybe today or tomorrow, 
we see a good amount of volatility and volume maybe come in and start selling the price down. It's also possible that we kind of just burst up even further towards maybe this key high of the high of this channel right here around 93.72 or I guess a high of about almost $9,400 and then start to roll over. Ideally, you would want price to really get rejected right here. But I think because the ES and the stock market has been so aggressive, as I've said before, Bitcoin has been day to day correlated in its movements to the stock market. Whenever the stock market in its um, trading week has been going up, Bitcoin has been going up. When the stock market has been going down, Bitcoin has been going down. Okay. So yesterday the stock market had a pretty good day. You know, you can see a nice up thrust move right here, or actually, I'm sorry, this was pretty much the move that the stock market had. So, you know, Bitcoin had a big move to the upside as well. So this is kind of where we are, you know, we're, we're consolidating right here against resistance. And typically you don't really want to consolidate here right near resistance. This typically is a little bit more bullish, but there's no confirmation that we've actually broken up or down. If we actually divide this area into a range, so let's go into the five minute time frame. Let's turn this thing off. It's easy to um, identify ranges in this kind of stuff because here's the thing. If you are someone who actually wants to get good at trading, all right, start identifying ranges like this broad range that you see right now right from this high to this low that's a larger range you got to identify channels like this you got to identify trend lines like this and you've got to identify horizontal support and resistance levels okay so the key levels of significance are the best to identify and once you know exactly what they are you know what to look out for and you know what to be careful about when it comes to horizontal support and resistance levels all right so that gives you potential stops, gives you potential entry points, gives you potential target profits. Okay. So we were talking about the five minute time frame, right? So let's just draw a quick range on this. Let's also turn this thing off. Turn this to 15. Okay, so now we have something like this. So just grab this, go sideways, and Probably said this is the bottom of the range right there. Okay. So this is the top of the range. This is the bottom of the range and the bottom of the range, because you can see that wick right there that just stops right there. And then it heads up further, further, and then breaks down just below that range low. Then again, climbs back up, comes back to retest that range low, right? So I know by definition that more than likely this is a range high, this is a range low. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've taken out the liquidity to the downside of the range low, taken out the liquidity to the top side of the range high, and now we're trying to see if we can press up further or we're going to get rejected. It's hard to say exactly what price is going to do right now, but based on the other time frames, we should start seeing a rejection at some point, you know, right around this area. You don't want to go too much further up uh, if you are going to respect this trend line right here. Uh, if we do break this trend line, we might you know, poke up towards the top of this descending channel, which I said around $9,400 or so. On the daily time frame, we had a pretty decent close of the daily candle yesterday. Let's check out the volume on that. Um, you know, the interesting thing about all this is overall, the, the volume is actually you know, going down in this particular area. And one can make the argument that, well, you know, we did see a high amount of volume come in at the top, which is what I say, um, uh, which is actually you know, more bearish because we haven't broken through any resistance level, right? But the other argument to be made by, by bulls, I could see is, all right, well, this could be your bigger consolidation of a flag, right? This is your pull, maybe. This is your pennant. And we're looking to break up and out of this. Uh, it's possible. Um, however, you know, we were already creating a big triangle over here that got broken to the downside. So I don't see the argument to be made that, well, now we can just shift trend lines 
and just say, all right, well, you know, here's a new trend line that's you know, now coming up kind of like that. Well, the real trend line was actually something like this from this key low of the wick as kind of something like this. Okay. I guess you can make the argument that, all right, well, actually, I'm sorry. Uh, it was maybe something like that. I think it was that right there. Uh, I guess you can make the argument that, all right, well, maybe this was just, you know, a, a trap for the bears. And then now we're going to push up and through, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into hypotheticals. I mean, you, you want to look at the chart and you want to see what exactly the chart is showing you. And the chart is showing you that a clear trend line resistance or rather trend line support was broken. And now we're pretty much hitting it as resistance. So I don't, know how to play the guessing game about that right it's, it's pretty evident that it was broken now it's heading up towards resistance and you know you don't want a long resistance right at least maybe wait for the smash up and see how it looks around this 9400 dollars area and then you could start considering all right well if it looks really bullish then you could potentially get into a long or you might get a short opportunity right here where we are at present moment which is again, the previous supply structure, which will this off here. Um, so you're, you might get an opportunity right here to short as well, which is again, you know, the previous supply structure. And that could be a potential good risk reward short because your short stop could be just above this wick if you want, or above these wicks right here, just to be safe, which again happens to be around $9,400 anyway. So even if we push up, you have that big trend line resistance that's coming in from here. Okay. So that's why I personally think that in my opinion, even now this is a better short than it is a long. Let's check out theta real quick because some of my members had some questions about it. So I think here's the thing about theta. I think I'm looking at it kind of like this. This is probably the key range high. This is a, um, a blow off top and a deviation above the range high came back collapsed down under i would probably say that you know maybe this is also the range low right there so if prices climb back inside this area okay there's a potential opportunity for you to take a trade from here to here that's all you got to do right again not investment advice but that's a pretty easy play of 12 13 percent if it climbs back inside this range low. Now you're probably thinking, okay, well, what if I want to get in now? What if I want to be a little bit more aggressive? Well, here's the first, you know, key low that we hit before we push down further and then pushed up. Okay. Because we changed up the structure a little bit because here's the thing. Once you create this kind of high, all you've really done is create lower highs, lower highs. And then finally you cemented a low, and now you put in a higher high as per this key swing. So now the only thing that you want to see from here, okay, because this is your previous lower high, this is your low, this is your higher high as per this swing. Now what you want to see, if you want to think that, all right, well, can theta be bullish, is you want to see this area right here hold, okay? As long as price puts in a higher low as per this one, and if it starts pushing past this key high right here, okay? So here's the thing. Here's how you can play this area. Again, uh, I'm not here to tell you to go long or short, but if I were playing this, this, uh, this is how I would look at it. And by the way, I don't really trade alts nowadays. Um, I think a lot of them are still overvalued. Uh, I still think there's probably going to be a big reckoning in alts. I speak about this in my video from yesterday for my live session, so go check it out. Um, so what you want to do is if you're thinking about playing this, okay, so you see this key low, this key low, this higher high right here, but now you want to see a higher low as per this swing down here. Now, if that is cemented, okay, then we know that, okay, well, this range right here is holding, meaning this range right here. Breaking up past this area, which means a high of this wick, means you could take a trade from here on here and if it breaks inside this range right then you can take a trade from here on here or it's very possible that you could take the entire trade from here all the way up 
there, so, so there's a bunch of different ways to actually play this trade. Unfortunately, right now, there's no trade, okay? So just rewatch this and see if it makes sense to you in terms of taking a trade if what I told you makes sense where this is a low, this is the higher, or this is a lower low, you need to put in a higher low right here, and a higher high as per the swing high to validate that, all right, this range right here looks like it's going to break, we'll probably push up to the next range high, or uh, sorry, the next range low, and then maybe up here, all right? So I wanted to give you guys that quick tip because I do see theta right here uh, having a massive sell-off. And this is, again, what happens when things are aggressively pumped up. And this is why I still believe that alts are uh, really just you know, trading at garbage levels, um, just attracting the people who truly want to speculate with high leverage. And then you see a massive drop like this. And you know, if you bought anywhere from here on up, right? So let's just say you even bought the top of this candle right here. You're still down 20%. If you bought anywhere near the top of the wick, let's just say somewhere inside this wick right here, you're down almost 40%. This is why trading alts is dangerous. Okay. There's, there's really no regulation overall in crypto and there's even less so when it comes to these pump and dump schemes, when it comes to alts. All right. So just be careful on that. The ES, again, looking pretty good right here, consolidating pretty nicely. I think it's, you know, to be honest, I think that the ES is actually going to probably pump up a little bit more. Uh, but I do believe that the sentiment is getting very, very optimistic and very, very bullish in the stock market. I don't know why, because the economy itself is really suffering and companies overall are seeing more bankruptcies, less um, uh, less uh, revenue, less guidance. Uh, they're not able to project out, you know, proper growth for the rest of 2020 or even 2021. I just don't see where that the hype is coming from for the stocks to keep going up. So, you know, that's just my opinion on it. I still think that stocks are heavily overvalued. And I think, you know, BTC is in the same cycle where I think it needs to have, you know, maybe another leg down. Um, to flush out, you know, maybe a lot of the net long positions. And I've spoken about this before. If you just simply look at the CME data, right? Let me see over here. Uh, we should have new CME data coming out tomorrow. So the new CME data will show us, you know, our non-commercials, which are the hedge funds going more um, net short, or are they maybe increasing their uh, long exposure are the non-reportables also being scared? Are they actually, you know, maybe closing down their long positions? Is the open interest going up or down? All this kind of information data will help us understand how the CME is positioned. And you already know that the minor capitulation has started, right? This is an indicator that has been used in the past to understand what the miners are going to uh, going through in terms of their struggle. And you know, this indicator helps us identify the different hash ribbons that are associated with the minor capitulation. So you can see again, minor capitulation has started. So this and many of the reasons why uh, I believe that Bitcoin is still bearish and, you know, I still think that we're probably going to have another leg down. But again, you know, do your own research. If you think that oh, we're going to go straight up from here, or we're going to go to 10,000 or whatever, Hey, take the other side of the trade, right? Prove everyone wrong, prove all the bears wrong. Okay, but I just don't see it that way yet. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with price. All right, um, hit, the, hit the thumbs up button, folks. Hit the like button. Leave us a comment of your thoughts and join the Discord community below. There's a free link below or you can join the Advantage membership where you get access to all these locked channels that you see where we take trades and I hope y'all come join. All right, cheers.